In the previous part, we've created a build value class for holding the data, a data source from which we get the paginated data, and we also created all the different files which we are going to need in order to have a paginated list view using the block parent about which is this whole tutorial series consisting of two parts. In this second part, we are going to finish the app by creating the actual block, handling dependency injection with Kiwi library and also making the UI. Hello, welcome to Reso Coder and let's begin where we left off by creating the block class. So class list block, it will extend block. Let's actually also import the block library. So block dot dart and this block will uh, hold type parameters list event and also list state. Now because we have put these two classes inside a exporter of a library, let's say we can now just import a list dot dart. So only one import and we have imported both of the list event and list state. Now this block needs to have two overridden functions. So create missing two overrides. One of these overrides is initial state. And that is really simple. Our initial state is nothing else than the list state dot initial. Also, you can probably imagine that from this list block, we are going to need to fetch our data. And for that, we need the data source. So final list data source data source, it will be private. Let's import our list data source class and we are going to pass it to the constructor and we will handle that through the Kiwi library once we get to dependency injection. So list block, which is the constructor and we set this data source over in this constructor. Now this map event to state needs to be an async generator. So async and then asterisk. We surely do not want to return null just for the sake of having it complete, we can check for event. So if event is fetch next page, even though we don't need to do this check because we after all have only one event. So there is nothing else that can be passed as an event over to this map event to state function. But anyway, if it is fetch next page, then we want to try. So try catch block. So we want to try to get next page items. So final next page items. This will hold whatever is returned from await data source dot get next list page. So remember, get next list page only gets the next page, not all of the previous pages. So we need to concatenate the previous content of the list and the newly fetched page, which will be added to the list. So we can do that by yielding yield simply returns a new element in the stream containing list state. And we can then listen to this stream from our list page, which we are going to create in just a little while. So we want to yield list state dot success and the success factory gets a list of items. And we want to create a concatenated list of items. So we want to get the current state. And from that current state, we want to get list items. And we want to add all of those next page items to these current items and then on no next page exception, we want to catch that exception, but we don't want to get the instance of the exception. So we can just pass an underscore in the parentheses here because we don't want to do anything with the instance of the exception. And if there is no next page exception, we want to again yield. But this time we are now going to create or actually call some factory on list state. We are only going to get the current state. And on that we are going to call rebuild, pass in the builder. And on that builder, we simply want to set has reached end of results to be true. And finally, just to simplify passing the events over to our block, we are going to create a helper function void get next list page which will simply dispatch the fetch next page event. We're definitely getting near the end of this tutorial towards the working app. But first we need to create the list page, which will be a stateful widget. So STFUL for stateful, it's going to be called list page. Let's also import material material.dart. 
The build function will now return a container, but it will return a scaffold and a scaffold needs an app bar, which will be a simple app bar containing a title, which will say, so it will be a text and saying paginated list app. We're going to leave the scaffold alone for a while because we need to create some properties for the state. So we need to get hold of the list block. And I have already mentioned the Kiwi library, which enables us to do dependency injection. We cannot just create list block directly because a list block requires us to pass in the data source. And we don't want to create the instance of data source directly in the list page. We, we want to be able to just create it somewhere else and then let that Kiwi pass that instance for us. For that, let's create another file right under the lib folder directly. It will be called injection container. And inside we want to import Kiwi and then it will have one top level function void init Kiwi. And here we want to call container, which is a singleton instance of a container class. As it writes here, always returns a singleton representing the only container to be alive. And on this container, we want to register factory and that factory will pass in a C of type container. And then we will return list data source. Now let's import list data source here. And then we'll have another register factory call down here. This one will instantiate a list block and a list block needs. Let's first import it. And as you can see, list block needs a data source passed into it. And we can pass it in by simply calling the container. So C dot resolve. Now, once we have this, we can go to our list page dot dart and close out the injection container. And this list block can be simply set once we import the Kiwi library even in here. So import Kiwi package. And this time we're going to import it as Kiwi so that it's clear which container we are calling. So the list block will be equal to Kiwi dot container. And on this container or actually from this container, we want to resolve whatever is of type list block. So let's import even list block here. Let's actually import the list dot dart not list block directly and we're cool well somewhat cool we need to go to main dot dart while we are at it we can also delete my home page stateful widget and all of that which is below it so delete it because we don't need that and also delete all of these comments here because they are obnoxious now the home widget will be our list page so let's import it over here. And we also need to initialize Kiwi and that can be done from the main function. So just copy run app. We're going to uh, convert it to a normal function, not just single expression function. First, we are going to call init Kiwi and let's import this uh, function from the file called injection container dart and then call run app. Now, really, all that's left to do is to go to the list page dot dart. I'm just going to paste here two functions in its state and dispose in init state. Basically, as soon as this list page state is created, we want to fetch the next list page because we want to have something in the list from the beginning. And then when it comes to calling dispose, we need to make sure that we get rid or dispose the list block because otherwise you are going to get memory leaks. All right, now onto the body of our scaffold. So let's set the body first. The body will be a block builder. This block builder is from the flutter block package. So let's import that. So flutter block dot dart. Now a block builder gets a block. It will be our list block. And also it needs a builder. And this builder passes us a context and also a list state called state. Inside this builder, we want to check if the state that list items is an empty list of items. And if it is empty, that means that we are still loading. So we want to simply return a center widget and that center widget will contain a circular progress indicator. And that's it. But if it is not empty, so 
else if there are some items inside the list of all items we want to return notification listener many widgets in flutter pass their notifications up the widget tree and list view is no different it for example passes a scroll notification but in order to get this working properly we also need to add a scroll controller to our list view so before we add it to our list view let's create a final property containing the scroll controller so here we have it now we can go back to notification listener and every notification listener gets on notification which is a function and we are going to create that function below the build function so bool handles scroll notification it gets a scroll notification called notification and here if the notification is scroll and the notification so if we have reached the end of the list view so if we have scrolled all the way down and also if the scroll controller which will be present on the list view and its position which is the scroll position and the extent after and extent after means the quantity of content conceptually below the current visible content of the viewport in the scrollable which simply means that when we are at the end of the list view and if the extent after so if the content after is zero this means that we are really at the end of the list when that is true we want to call list block dot get next list page and then we want to return false this will allow ancestors of the widget to receive notifications when we return false if we were to return true the ancestors of the widget so widgets above the list view would not get this notification passed to them it's not important in this app but in some apps it may be important now let's pass this handle scroll notification function to on notification and the child of the notification listener so whatever we want to listen to notifications on will be a list view that builder we need to set the item count of the list view this will be calculated in a function which is really simple it's called calculate list item count it gets passed a list state so let's actually call it from here right now so calculate list item count and pass in the state so if we have already reached the end of results we simply return the true length of the list of items however if we have not yet reached the end of results we want to return a length one more than is the true length of the list items because we basically want to make space for the loading indicator as you can see in the demo app here as soon as we load the 19th item or actually the 20th with the index of 19 we get a loading indicator here and this loading indicator down there needs a space to occupy in the list view this is what this plus one is for then we also want to pass the controller over here which will be our scroll controller and then finally the item builder which grants us a context and also an index now it's a good time to create the functions which will create the individual widgets for the list items so build loader list item which simply has a circular progress indicator and then build data list item let's import the list item which is passed in there it returns a cart with elevation of two it has a padding it has a row and this row contains a simple circle here of size 50 by 50 with appropriate color which we get from the list item and then it has a text with a title which we also get from the list item also you can get the code from the link in the video description and inside the item builder we want to return and if index is greater or equal than state dot list items dot length and remember that it can be greater because we have added plus one if we have not reached the end of results so if it is more we want to build loader list item otherwise we want to build data list item and the item is simply state dot list items and we want to get whatever is at the index of index we still have some errors so let's check them out oh yeah we are missing one curly brace so let's add it all the way down here 
but still we have some error but i don't know where it is oh here it is oh yeah we have not added the semicolon here so now let's save it it's going to be reformatted nicely now we have only one error in main.dart and that is also that we don't have a semicolon here but now we can launch the app so hit f5 and actually before i do that i'm going to close the example app here so that you can be sure that i'm showing you this app which we have just built so here we go and let's actually hit Control f5 and you could see that at the start we get the centered loading bar or actually the circular progress bar now we have the generated items here and then when we scroll down we're going to load the next page and then the next so this is already the third page loaded so three four and five did it load five well let's count for the second time so let's restart the app again yeah so the first page second third fourth fifth and the sixth is not there so yeah that's cool and that's it for this tutorial it was quite long but i think that you learned everything that you need to know when you want to create an infinite paginated list view you can take the code from this tutorial and then just simply extend it to be used with some kind of an api and you're gonna be all set also definitely subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell button if you don't want to miss more tutorials like this from flutter if this tutorial helped you with implementing the paginated list view definitely give it a like and also share it with others leave a comment if you have any suggestions or questions or anything else to say follow me on instagram facebook and twitter and see you in the next video